It's Sunday the 7th of May 2017. This is a chart update for the gold price and various gold related charts. It's been a pretty rough couple of weeks for gold in the uh, both in the stocks and in the, the price itself. Uh, the stocks sort of being pulled down by a lot of the, uh, the ETF flows. And then this week the gold price sort of caught up to those stock movements. You can see it's sort of it's come back off that long term downtrend line that I'd spoken about in the last video. And it, you know, threatened to break that at 1290, and then uh, had a couple of sort of topping days, and it's pulled back. And you know, it went through that 1255 was sort of a key level that I thought might hold there, but it went that went this week, and now we're back down to 1230. The jobs numbers on Friday were sort of in line with expectations, and you know, a little bit of a beat, and that was you know, I got a bit of a doji there, candle, sort of indicating a bit of a bottoming, I think. You know that news should have been bullish for the market, for the for the stock market, and uh, you know the unemployment rate dropped to a, another another new low, I think 4.4%. So you know it's hard to hard to know if that's a bottoming candle there, but chances are when you get that sort of good news for the market and the gold price doesn't really fall a lot, that, that's a, a sign of a potential turning point. You can see also that it's uh, it's it's sort of retraced the same magnitude as that previous down move here. And uh, you know, I, there's a potential here that if it if it goes if it doesn't hold 12:30, I think that 1,200 level again is on the line. Uh, that's sort of the level I use as a, as the bullish. I guess if that that's the bullish bear, this bull bull market that's been you know 18 months or so now. I think that's the real level um, where that comes into question. So I've spoken about that a couple of times, and uh, obviously we had the we had to drop below that in uh, in December, but I guess that was kind of a, a trump euphoria so not I'm not placing as much emphasis on that but I think now it's good if we could hold that 1200 level but I'm, I'm hopeful that a 1230 hold is uh, is likely the other one that I've uh, talked about a fair bit is the US dollar index uh, I've been tracking this one for for 12 months or so or longer so just to recap you know we've had this big ball flat this big flag formation uh, forming over the last two years. 2015, 16 was really dominated by this sideways sort of downtrending uh, action, and then we we broke out above that on the on the Trump euphoria again. And since then we've had this little sort of head and shoulders formation, or you could sort of call it another chart they uh, often talked about as a three declining peaks formation. So one, two, three, and both of those are very bearish and sort of quite reliable chart indicators. So we broke, and then we've we've broken through this this uptrend uh, for the last 12 months that's been broken in the last couple of weeks and it's just holding above the top in this above the top of this uh, this flag formation here but I think you know that the book the, that action is pretty bearish um, I don't know what's going to be the driver to break make it break lower but I, I've often thought that any action sort of in this chart is going to be is going to be coupled with something in the gold price I mean, often you can, you, you can get uh, movement in the gold price up and the US dollar index sort of simultaneously, but generally a, a bearish US dollar index chart is going to be good for the US dollar gold price. That's a typical, I would say. Um, but yeah, if we break if we break, break below this 98.5 sort of level here, which is that bottom low there, that's, I think, you know, we're going to see a move back toward mid 90s at least here. Uh, that's definitely, this is definitely indicating that's on the cards. The other thing, I mean, I guess uh, it's good to have charts, but it's good to tie them up with the fundamentals. And something I'm looking at this long-term dollar index chart, I've noticed this the similarity of this sort of area here of the chart in 2004, 2005 uh, to what we have now. So we sort of, if you look at this uptrend uh, here from these lows, it's kind of a very similar formation that's that's formed here. So we've had that that move and sort of a little bit of a head and shoulders chart forming there, and then it broke down. Now, the key thing here is that this is actually when the um, the Federal Reserve, the orange box indicates the last rate hike cycle from the US Federal Reserve. So from July 2004 to uh, July 2006. So that was, that two years was, uh, I think they raised interest rates maybe three or 4% there from the, from I think from probably from about 2% to 5%. Um, so that's quite 
relevant now, given it's we've been we've been sort of uh, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the first time in um, I think it was in December 2015. So if you look at this, it's kind of about about there is the the um, the cycle. So it's not. I mean, it's good that when these charts and the and the uh, the fundamentals kind of line up. And I, I'm tending to think that we, you know, the reason that the market that these these charts tend to t the dollar index would tend to turn over is because of the uh, the outlook for the U.S. dollar becomes worse and during that rate hike cycle. I mean, typically gold is supposed to be going poorly in that cycle as well, um, and that's actually not the case. If you look at the same area of the gold price back in um, in 2004 2006, it was actually an extremely bullish period for gold so when it rose from that sort of consolidation around 450 there all the way up to sort of six seven hundred dollars and this is just when I guess the the outlook for the US economy was starting to sort of turn over a little bit the, you know a few signs of that excessive um, those low interest rates cause those excesses that um, tend to be the, the authors of the next next crisis as we saw with the subprime market so that's this is a, a quite a bullish period for gold, which you know the conventional wisdom is it's not. Uh, so just just something to be aware of there. I like when you can see those fundamental relationships uh, marrying up with the with the uh, the charts. Uh, some of the other things this week, S and P, not a lot really happening here. Just zoom out to the, the most recent there. Back up testing the uh, a new all time high close. I think that was. I think it's kind of equal with the intraday high uh, two months ago. Uh, hard to know what's going to happen here. I don't. I don't see a huge upside. Uh, we might break out again a little bit above toward 24.50. Who knows? It's not a not a major a major um, trade for me. I don't think it's. I don't think there's danger of this going to 3,000 anytime soon. This is a fairly for for me. It's a fairly mature trend. There's a lot of signs of sort of topping action. Some of the fundamental stuff you see with. Uh, ETF flows and, and um, smart money kind of sort of getting out of the market a little bit and um, the public coming in is indicating sort of a top in the near term. Who knows how long that's going to be, but um, I previously talked about this little uptrend here. That that was broken a few weeks ago with the uh, healthcare problems, I think. That seems to be a little bit resolved now. I'm still not sure if they're actually going to pass that, but some of the Trump... Uh, trade is, is still still there but I think definitely waning and it's it's one or two little if there's one or two political problems again I think that the market might turn over but yeah I'm not I'm not following that too closely at the moment um, the other couple of things that I've been watching the gold mining ind indexes so I've talked a few times about the ETF flows being very important in these recently so the GDXJs had a horror run in the last uh, last month uh, after they announced their index rebalancing changes, uh, which a few people have, have commented on. So we're back down toward almost to the, the December low. This this week saw some good sort of bottoming action, I think, fairly fairly early bottoming action, but it's gapped down on, on Thursday and uh, on reasonable volume and then had a sort of a matching candle up on, on Friday, particularly in light of the sort of bullish um, general market news it's that's a reasonably good sort of indication that this this might be turning around um, you know still can still might go toward that level at 28 the the uh, bottoming there in December but I'm hopeful this is a, a turnaround here same in the in the GDX state GDX which is the uh, the larger gold miners similar you can see it's gap down here and then had a had a move up uh, below above that so you can hear that. See, that was the support level there. Gap down below, come up again. So that's sort of indicating an early indication that might be forming a bottom on those charts. Uh, some of the the ETF flows. I mean, that's not necessarily the same thing as the chart itself, but there's been a lot of outflow still from the GDXJ and the GDX. The sort of, I think maybe 15% of the GDXJ has come out in redemption redemptions in the last month, and. Uh, the GDX, I think, for a smaller amount, but still in that, you know, maybe five to ten percent, which is quite a large, quite a large amount of money being pulled out of these indexes. Um, so the market's definitely not bullish on the gold miners at the moment. Typically, that's been a, a good time to buy. Um, 
if you've got a decent um, time horizon of a few months, which you know in, in the gold market is a fairly long time. But yeah, that's 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 what I'm watching at the moment. I think uh, it's hard to know. Obviously, with the gold market, it's always hard to know. But I think if you've, it's a good time to start accumulating some of those quality names uh, in the in the gold space. The other one actually was the the uh, Australian gold price. I've, 1650 is sort of a level that has stood out to me in the past as kind of a bullish bearish um, indicator. It was kind of the the support, the resistance zone around in this 2015 period. So it hit multiple times around that 1650, broke out above it, and then it's come back below. And then just this, it it kind of tends to be, I guess, the correlation of the exchange rates and the gold price. This 1650 turns to be a, a bit of an indicator. I'm looking for it to hold that level. Um, and we're in that, I think we're in this long term uptrend here in the gold price. So you can see it's had one, had three touches there on that lower trend line. And I think we're going to tend toward this, this upper trend line in the next year or two. Um, that's my, my reason mainly for investing in Australian based gold miners. I think the, uh, the headwinds this, this week for the iron ore price are indicating that the Australian dollar might come off more as well. So I'm looking for Australian dollar gold to hit 2,000 in the next 18 months. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's sort of my, my base case for investing in, in most of the small and mid-cap Australian gold miners, uh, quality operators. And uh, yeah, I think good time to keep, keep, keep accumulating those names.